afternoon everyone afternoon it is a mostly cloudy day and side note with those panels and that amount of sun say hello shadow and that amount of sun I'm running both of my chest freezers my freezer freezers right now in clouds I have two freezers running on that power so I thought I'd uh, take you around cuz um, you see that see that you think they want something I think they want something I'll tell you what it's about that time for their afternoon feed them let's um cuz look here they come. Here they come. Let's give them an afternoon feeding. I am here on the homestead all by my lonesome. Uh, 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 you guys, back up, back up, back up! I'm gonna get a scoop of the food here. Alright. Watch out of here, Tommy. T, T has determined that old fat bastard is going in the freezer just as soon as we get a chance. Look at this. You don't reckon they're hungry, do you? Watch out. Watch out. Come on. Watch out, Henny. You gotta watch out for him. He he must be hungry too, cause he's he's not following me around. Let's go over here. I love these stumps. They're good for feeding. There's my littles. Well, we're gonna be bringing the turkeys home soon. The turkey chicks. Would have already had them, but has some other things that are on the plate. And. There. I tell you what, it's weird the rains that we've had, the wetness. There was a cloud here. I mean, a black cloud of them. You know, watch out. He's an aggressive thing. T has decided that he's absolutely going to be in the freezer. We've never had a more aggressive turkey. Every time she comes in to do something, he ends up attacking her or something. All right, so we got some. I wanted. Oh, let's take a look while we're in here. So uh, today's been a busy day. You ain't gonna believe all the stuff we got going on. Y'all goofballs. All right, so um, I'm gonna put another gate in here. As you can see, I'm working on it. Put some concrete in here, and I even managed to save a bag of concrete. All this doggone rain. Under that blue tarp right there, I had five, four bags of concrete that were intended to be used on my greenhouse, right? And um, all this rain. Somehow or another, don't ask me why, but we've got two tarps there. It stayed dry under that camo tarp, and then for whatever reason, um, in the last couple nights when we've had this last rain, uh, the... Um, rain knocked it down or, or excuse me the rain made it wet so this morning we get up and for the very first day in a row first day it won't be a day in a row i'm in a weird place it's been a long day and let's see here can't see it oh it's too dark in there there's one, there's two, three, three there. T's got some eggs to collect. That's her job. I don't do it for her. She likes to collect them. Anyway, um, so I don't understand why the concrete got wet, but the concrete got, uh, the concrete bags got wet. The ones that I got for doing this project. And so we're like, oh, it's still wet. It hasn't hardened, so let's put it to use. Well, we've been intending on putting a gate there. So that was one of the first things. It wasn't the first thing. So I'll have to show you um, 
the the greenhouse work um you know the uh, rough sawn stuff i've been working with and i've shown you you some of you've seen it some of you haven't hey midnight what you doing buddy all right so we had some logs cut up and this is all rough sawn right so i got i got four quarter stuff here for some projects from me who knows maybe some flooring or i don't know what i'm going to do with it and uh my buddy got a bunch of stuff we got it uh done in three quarter in order to uh put it on the walls in the greenhouse and finish off the greenhouse that i've been working on uh, last year and finally this year just started back on so uh, what happened was in edging up the um edging up the um the boards and cutting them to length and width i ended up with a whole bunch of scrap and all that scrap i used uh, to rip down into some three-quarter by three-quarter stakes. You see some there and We had some from last year. Those are browned out. So you need tomato stakes So yesterday I was in, working on that inner interior wall So the first thing I did was make up four boxes of kindling actually it's right here I guess I could show it to you. So when I brought it back um, T and I spent the morning. What are you doing hiding under there goofball? And so it's all the uh, live edge edges of it. And so that's my kindling. So nothing goes to waste. I've told you all this before. Nothing goes to waste. And then all the rest of the peat little strips and stuff that I cut off as kindling. The um, slats that I use to space the boards. We're going to turn those. We've been turning those into stakes so we can write our, our uh, labels of what we're putting in the ground. So we spent about an hour and a half uh cutting all the kindling up cornering off the cornering off the um, ends here you know putting the tips on them tip tipping them and we go to pull the tarp back and we're like oh hell look at these bags are wet so we ended up mixing up two of them and grabbing two of those cedar posts to go ahead and put in the gate from one paddock to the other then it was planting time so we spent most of the day putting in our herbs so i've got some more um let's walk through a bunch of this this is a lot of stuff we got in the ground today so we've got um that is thyme hey buddy there's some more marjoram and for you folks that like fresh pizza you never had fresh pizzas until you've done a squeezed tomato with some marjoram and a little oregano and maybe a little basil but mostly if you like pizza marjoram is the seasoning for pizza so we put in some opal basil some uh, some common chives some scallions over here uh, some regular chives put in some more sweet basil some cilantro here uh, some more borage we got both the um, Greek oregano, um, Greek oregano, and German, I think it's German oregano. Celery's taken off. Threw in some Thai basil right there, some parsley right there. Uh, threw in some uh, cinnamon basil right there. I don't know if you can hear them, but those girls are flying. My cukes are starting to look good. They're taking off. And then I started planting tomatoes. And notice how small and tiny and in the ground they are. These are bigger than those are over there. And when we get over there, you're going to be like, oh my goodness. Those, you know, these have a first leaf or two. Those were barely the, fir the, the, the first two petals. So we still got a bunch of seedlings that we need to deal with. Some of that's going to go to market thought you might like to see this my beans are putting on flowers so these are the royal burgundies those should be the Cherokee I'd be able to go back in my old videos and find out but they got taken down now I'd have to find the date and file number and all that and that's a little more work um, look at them growing they're taking off uh, we had a big issue with the flea beetles. T took care of it yesterday, putting some uh, some DE, some diatomaceous earth, on our eggplants. 
Uh, our tomatoes are doing really good. You can see we're getting them, uh, getting some stakes in the ground to prepare for them. Let's go through over here. They're really starting to look like they're going to take off. So you see the stakes. Those stakes I, were, I was using to separate the boards so that they would dry out. Now that we're not doing that, I'm using them for labeling stakes. And to mention, there's some cockamamie way I'm doing some things here is for seed saving. Now, this is going to be a seed saving year for me. And as I stated before, I'm kind of hoping to do some um, selling of some seeds. Now, with tomatoes, tomatoes are self-pollinators. So, uh, what they recommend, must be kicking some of the drones out. The drones aren't flying too well, and I keep seeing them on the ground crawling around. Anyway, uh, let's see. So, technically, you want 10 feet between them. So, I don't quite have that with some of these. These I weren't I was not planning for seed saving purposes. This is just putting some in the ground. But I could save some seed probably on this side over here, maybe from over here on this one and over there. Oh, and by the way, I went in my hive. Got stung right there. Huh. Part of the Part of the uh, deal of having bees. All right, so let's take a look at what some of I got. What is some of the things I got here? Let's go. Got Golden Jubilee. We got Mortgage Lifter. Those are greens, eggplant, uh, Anaheim's, Sweet 100, Beef Steaks, uh, Traveler 76, and early girls now these were store-bought early girls because the ones i had gotten were hadn't um hadn't gotten that big and i needed more we got orange icicle oh and some of the herbs i put in over here too we got the thyme sweet basil um italian oregano right there uh and some and some uh greek oregano right there parsley marjoram thai basil um, i'm having some issues with my sage uh, i put some in up there right in that uh, my herb spot up there and it's dying back and i don't know so i'm not putting these in the ground i just transplanted them in bigger pots uh, for now um i got some squash that i put here i'm waiting for them to come up those have popped there's one that's popped up right there this two other squash i don't even remember what they are i think these are uh the the early white scallops and then we got some should be some crooknecks and then some zucchinis those are all supposed to be uh acorn squash what do you think there shadow hmm all right so separation so i'm trying to get a minimum of you know 10 feet between my tomatoes so what do we got here? Large red cherries right here. Oh, and I didn't mention that little cluster of them up there inside the cucumber area is the chocolate cherries. I did put some more cucumber seeds in here. And these are these um, uh, pie pumpkins. Uh, winter, winter sweets, I think they were called. I, for, I forget. All right, so this row of tomatoes. And these were, I mean, I'm even surprised this one came back. There was only two leaves and it was buried. But this is the Romas. And this is the early girls. Now, in order to save seed, I got some more Romas planted. You can see the spots where I've been digging. You, know, you see that? And that's all Romas. So there's going to be a whole cluster of Romas here for me to uh, save seed from. Then, I got some area in here. That I have not planted. I'm thinking I'm going to come in here and either put some more beans or cucumbers or something like that. And then I, I pulled way off of these over here for 10 feet. And these are my zebras. Over there is black crims. And I got some area in here I need to fill in. Look at my cabbage. Isn't that spectacular? Those are looking good. A squash here, I don't even remember what it is. I'll know as soon as I see the flowers. I don't really care about the squash. I can generally identify what a squash is once I see it's the female flowers and the fruit on it. Look at that. And my kales. 
So we've got my blue scotch, my Lacinato, my Russian red, which is more like a Siberian white. There's, there's not as red as those. Those up there that are in my greens, those will be seed saving. Um, Siberian kale and my scarlet. Let's go take a walk down here real quick. Look at those girls flying like crazy. Oh, geez, let them go. All right, my squash is over here. I planted some more. I told you I planted some more over here. And a few of them have popped up. We got one there. Where's the other one? I saw two of them. Those little little yellow beetles, I think we've done killed them all. Uh, look at the corn. In another few days, it needs to get a little bit bigger. I'm going to hoe through there, and then I'll mound up around the corn real good. So there's a lot of weedage, weedage that's, that's coming up in here, that little green stuff. I'm going to have to pull that up. And we got stragglers and tomatoes, so there's a volunteer don't know what it is but I'm staking it up and a couple more scattered up there in the beans I don't care if they pop up they're growing you know and then down here in my squash and you can see a bunch of them started here here all the way through here 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 all the way through I've uh, interspersed some tomatoes so what do we got over there German German pink we got Warren's yellow cherries and we got some black cherries down here. So they're interspersed. I still have room. I think I'm going to put another one over there. But everything's looking pretty good down here. We've, we've pretty much killed all those little yellow things and threw a few sunflowers in here. I'll have to come back and do some weeding. See, some of those stumps are trying to grow on me. There's some, there's some poison oak right there. You know, it, it is what it is. Now, y'all got to remember. Oh, stop and think a second here. Oh, look, a pea. Pea plant. Y'all stop and think. All oh, this, along through all here, was wooded in December. And TNI did all this clearing. We've seen, we seeded all of this and seeded all of this. And then we left this area for our squash field up through here this area right here going through the electric fence that area where we had the fire uh, we put some cucumbers so there'll be a huge cu cucumber vine area same with that area down there we've actually managed to get a um, oops let's not touch that uh, uh, and let's see and it's a nut tree um, pecan pecan is what it is we put in a pecan down there so um, eventually I'm going to clear out some more of these trees. You know that. You, you know that if you watch long enough. And I've got some other things planted down there. I'm not going down there. But it's starting to fill in and green out, which is good. And there are um, interspersed in here. There's some kales. I threw some beet seeds in here and some peas. And all kinds of weird stuff is popping up out here. Isn't that right, Shadow? So, let's review lots of tomatoes. It's all about seed saving. Uh, so, I'm going to be uh, implementing some special seed saving techniques uh, on the squash. There's a poppy. Poppy flower, poppy seed. Look at this. This is my chioga beets you can tell by looking at the red and green stripes on the um, on the stems and in the in the of course the uh, beet itself but this is all chioga beet I'm gonna have a lot of that oh, I've got a couple peppers that T put in here of course my walking onions my uh, Egyptian walking onions. Look at all the little babies. All that this thing needs to do is fall over, hit the ground, and all of these are going to root out, and they'll, they'll do the same thing. My uh, German chamomile is blooming. Although I'm going to leave these first big ones to go ahead and go to seed so I can save seed on them. 
And then over here, in the shade, I made some other plantings. I put in some cilantro. I uh, put the watercress back in here because I think it's going to co stay cooler and more moist for the watercress. The uh, the purple, and I'm not sure the exact name of it, um, the, the, the purple uh, sweet potato. Boy, that's exploded. There's still the others that are in here. I'm waiting for them to come up. They have not yet, so I don't know. I think it needs to warm up. They like the heat. This had already sprouted because I'd left it wrapped up in a plastic bag in the house, and the temperature got to it. But we got some cilantro, some more German chamomile, and, uh, of course, the dill. You can see the dill coming up. And I'll have to get in here and hand weed and clean it out. Oh, and I didn't didn't show you this on the other side. We walked right by it, and I didn't even think about it. I'll have to go over there. And look, right in front of the beehive, I got some milkweed. I need to transplant that root. They must be pushing out those drones. There is a whole bunch of drones on the ground right there. Holy moly. Too many drones. They're getting rid of them exactly what they're doing the girls aren't letting them back in that's something to tell you learn something there the males are disposable in the beehive mm-hmm yes they are they only have one purpose and that's mating so let's go back over here I threw some other herbs over here y'all want to do this if you have the space in your yard to do this is find a natural place that you can leave things to grow so I've got some uh, Roman chamomile and I put it in here uh, there and there that, those are started in seed in there so the idea is this so here's my yarrow very medicinal flower is medicinal leaves stem it's all medicinal I believe I'm not for sure. I'm going to have to go back in. I think this is uh, um, either feverfew uh, or valerian. I can't remember. They both have a little yellow, a white flower with a yellow uh, center. But, okay, so we got herbs here. That's the whole point is to just naturally let the herbs go. And, uh, and so, and last year... Before I plant, did anything out here, I threw some dill, dill seed, and I got dill, 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 dill. They're all over. They're scattered. And then when the the chamomile comes up, it'll drop its seed. So the whole concept is this: I never will have to deal with messing this area with this area in the ground. Once this comes up, it's going to reseed itself every year. The seed's going to drop, and I don't have to mess with it. I'm going to have the herbs I want here for uh, culinary and medicinal issues ready to rock and roll. Now, the beet seed, I will have to collect it. And I was hoping to show you... Um, I was hoping to show you some limas, but they haven't popped up. The lettuce, some of the lettuce I've scattered here has popped up. There, 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 there. All these, these are the, that's lettuce. Now I'll have to weed out around them. We have another volunteer tomato right here. I have no idea what it is, but I'll be damned if I'm going to take it out. And then there's, um... I think I said it was some more beets through here. And then I got some cucumber seeds in here, and they haven't popped up. And the potatoes are awesome. Can't wait to dig them up. And then, of course, I've got my some more steaks. So, long walk through the, through the um, garden. Some of these peaches are getting big enough that they're weighing down the branches here. I told tea she went out look at all those wow i gotta tie these up somehow I told t i said pick up some string so we can tie these things up so we got uh we got to get some string um i'm also need to train these tree limbs down you can see where i'm doing it with a few of them because i'm gonna be um 
in bonsai mode in bonsai mode with these trees so I'm gonna move these limbs where I want them because um, I kinda want them like that one spread out uh, so that I can control the growth and direction for the ease of picking and access I'm gonna keep them topped off and the peach tree I'm gonna keep topped off so that I don't have to get an on a ladder and I can reach all of this stuff lots of maintenance to do and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to do this I, I really I, I'm sorry I hate to do this but I hate to do this but uh, mm, mm, mm. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -mm. Oh, that was good. Notice the difference when I tell you the Russian red kale, how red the stems are. This is from a seed packet that I had to get because I wasn't sure about those coming up. So, all right, that's a long walk around. I'm going to be getting some elderberry off of here. And the seed from the elderberry should might be we might try saving some I don't know how well it'll do I had elderberry seed but it was old and it never came up the best way to do it is to take a shoot off the bottom and dig it out where it's got roots on it and just transplant it that's the best way to propagate that and of course I'm gonna have carrot seed now there are several varieties of carrots and this year in particular I'm not going to be able to separate and control uh, which one goes to seed I don't have enough seed stock, stock saved up I had bags of it but it did not germinate properly so I need a new seed now this may end up getting cross-pollinated between orange carrots and yellow carrots and shanties or whatnot and so that it'll still produce a carrot that's eat edible but we'll, we'll have to see it's most likely going to be genetic to or to the plant but you never know so in the seeds that i sell this year or late fall there will be um there will be um carrot seeds some of that stuff will be mixed you know some of it will we'll have to see how it goes Anyway, so you can see what I'm doing in, in preparations for seed saving on a lot of stuff. We'll go through the techniques on the squash. But those of you who do end up buying seeds from me, seed packets from me, keep this in mind uh, when you do this. Everything is open pollinated here, which means there might be some genetic crossing on some things. Now... I'm not in a perfect scenario yet where I can um, uh, be perfect on every plant all the time. It's just not possible uh, yet. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. However, everything will be viable and everything will be able to produce food. Uh, what I recommend is to take the same approach that I do, and that is... When you buy a pack of seeds, it is your intention never to buy that kind of plant ever again because you're going to know how to save seed and you're going to do your best to save seed from that plant in whatever technique is required in order to do such. That's the goal. The goal is to never, ever, ever have to buy that seed again because you know what you're doing. Those girls are buzzing. All right, folks. Lots of green beans. Once I get these potatoes harvested, we're going to till all that in. And those other rows up there, we'll till all that in. Plant some more beans or some more cukes or something. I think I'll close out this video with a 